This one technique will cut down your losing trades. Hey, you're breaking into traders. This is Mark. Welcome to your daily trading video. Hope a great weekend. You're gonna have to forgive the title, but you know what? This is a really useful piece of advice for day traders. It helped me loads, and I know people it's helped before, and it's just a good all-round solid advice. So let's get straight to it. Listen, busy day in the markets, um, heavy day on the DAX, Deutsche Bank ruling that, Dow as well. You know, we've all been there, we can all see what's going on. But anyway, let's get straight to this little little technique. Okay. The number one thing I find that all traders do, it's not beginning traders, not intermediate or just advanced. Obviously, the more advanced you are, the less you do it because you've learned from the thousands or whatever you've lost by doing this kind of thing. But a lot of people do is they over trade. They get involved in trades they shouldn't be. you know, And that is normally because they're chasing. They want to chase a trade. They want to get into it. They want to make money. They see the market moving. And you know what? You cut down 10%, 20%, 50% of your losing trades, that is going on the bottom line. You're getting more profit. If you're profitable, you're making more money. If you're a losing trader, that is just going to shorten your learning curve loads and it's going to be going to be much sooner that you start becoming profitable. So little tips like this and little ideas, you know, I think are, are really, really useful. So when you're scalping the market or if you're day trading the market, let's say you're working off a one minute chart. I'm going to use the, the Dow's example, but I'll bring up some others in a second. Um, don't use market orders to get into the trade. Okay, too many times you see traders or you see people diving in to trades because we're all on this romantic notion, right? That the market is going to just dive down. It's going to, if we're short, it's going to dive down. Pullbacks are going to be nothing. It's going to just fall to the floor. You know, we all think that's going to happen. And you know what? It never happens. Well, very, very rarely. So rarely that we can't. There's no point in thinking about it because if you're just trading for that, then you're going to lose all your money waiting for that opportunity to come. We have to accept there's noise in the market, there's pullbacks, there's chop, there's this and the other. So here's a little technique. If you're on a one-minute chart, okay, let's say you're on the one-minute chart, you're watching this Dow here. Let me clear off some of this rubbish on here. I was using this to sort of show you a bit of a guide, and I'll bring it up in a second. But one-minute chart, you get a drive off the open, and you want to get short. All right. The rule is... And about this, it's just a rule that you can, you can change it, add to it, do whatever you want to do to it. It's just an idea to stop you chasing the market. The rule is, if you want to get short, let's say you've got a short thesis, you cannot short until the high of, a, of the prior one-minute candle is broken. So if you want to get short here, you can't. You want to get short here, you can't. You want to get short here, you can't. You want to get short here, you can only get short if this candle is high, is broken, which it does there. Okay, so it's... You miss all this, fine, but what it does is it makes you stop and think and set your order in. Drives lower, drives lower, that candle forms, you can go short there. You want to get short here, you can't, you can't. You can only get short if it breaks that high, you can only get short if it breaks that high, breaks that high, breaks that high, breaks that high. All of a sudden, there you can go short if you want to do that. But the point is, at this point in time now, you're probably, probably going to be saying, you know what, this has come a long, long way. There was a short entry there. I didn't take it. But even if you had take that little break of the high there, and let me zoom in a bit on this so we can see exactly what's going on. You know, even if you had taken that short there, you're still going to be okay, right? And you can't take this, you can't take this, you can't take this. Then all of a sudden, you can take that. You want to go short, you can go short there. But you know you're going to be saying to yourself, no. Look, we've wicked already. You're gonna have a minute to stop and think about the situation. It's the same about, you know, it's just giving you that extra minute. And also, it does two things. Number one, what it does is it gives you time to think. Okay, it gives you time to review. You're not diving into the trade. You're not chasing. You're not getting sucked into a move. And number two, it allows for a little bit of noise. So instead of chasing at the low of a move, it's actually automatically making you sell into a little retracement or buy into a retracement let's say you wanted to go long here you can't do it because it hasn't broken the low you can't do it hasn't broken this low hasn't broken this low hasn't this is the first point here that it breaks the prior one minute candle low so that's the first point in that move you can get long and guess what it's not actually a bad place to be long you know okay if you'd have dived in here 
fine. But what it does is it just stops you from chasing stuff. It stops you from chasing. It makes you think. It makes you calm. It makes you collected. And also, it stops you getting involved in chop. You know, when the market is chopping around and you're getting the signals all the time, you're going to have to say, you know what, maybe maybe it's time to step back and wait for a more aggressive environment you know even if we look at the dax this morning the dax this morning same type of thing or this afternoon if you're just waiting you're waiting get an opening drive you want to get on the opening drive you want to get short you want to get long whatever it may be yeah waiting for that to happen and here we go we've got uh, this is the the start of the day here eight o'clock the cash about there i'm just going to put a little squiggle in and we start to drive low so you can't get short until we break the high of the prior one minute candle okay so you don't get it there you don't get it you don't get it all of a sudden you get it here right that's your first it is not a rule on its own it's not a case of uses what you must do it's it's basically an added filter so if you want to get short you do this to help you stop chasing stop those other things we talked about so there's your first that's fine, you know, that's not a bad place to get short. Okay, let's say now you want to get short here, right? A lot of people are going to be diving in down here, and especially with the DAX. The DAX is an absolute animal for this. It does these major flushes and looks like it's going to collapse through the floor and then just stalls, and then either just chugs and rolls again or starts to put a bit of momentum in. And the trouble is you, you've you got there is it looks like absolute death. On that one minute, the book is thin, no one's on the bid, it's getting hammered, it's just, it looks brutal. But then all of a sudden it just stops and you get that drift back up. And if you're that fool who's selling that low there, you know, you're gonna get stopped on that because that's 25 tick pullback. And if you're working on a three to one or even two to one, you know, your target, if you're, gonna, you're not gonna be using that size stop for, a small day trade type scalp you may be for a swing and of course the dax can then do another 200 points but the point is with this is it's trying to time your entry your day trading entry your scalp entry in the best possible time so it stops you chasing this the first time you can get involved in, in this whole move and as we say it's not perfect but it is off this low this is the first time that you're allowed to get involved from this point here so how much has that potentially saved you Okay, it's what well, the low there, 48, and we're looking at 66. So it's almost a 20 ticks it saved you. So you you have to sit through that before you can get short again. And this is this is this is what it's all about, guys. It's about accepting the fact that there is noise in the market. Markets don't do this, they do this, they do this. And the last thing you want to do is be buying right at the peak. So it stops you from doing that, and it also makes you think it gives you at least a minute to think about what you're doing. Anyway, bit of a longer video today, but I think it's really useful because the volatility is picking up as we expected. We've got loads of stuff coming out with Fed this week. I'm sure we'll be talking about that later in other videos and loads of different stuff going on. Volatility across the board, obviously presidential uh, debate tonight. So there's loads of catalysts. So it's important to not get caught up and get excited by too much volatility. And that goes from if you just started out right the way up to if you've been trading for 50 years it's the same kind of thing so little idea there let me know your thoughts on that if you've got something else you want to share feel free uh, if you're a way of adapting that feel free as well or you want to discard it and don't worry about it then feel free that's good too take care guys back another video tomorrow